Welcome back, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be playing some Black Red or Rakdos Open the Graves. Uh, so this is a deck built around the enchantment Open the Graves. So it's a 5 mana, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie token creature. So this is very much in the aristocrat style themed. Uh, we're, we're basically sacking our creatures for value, and we have a lot of reoccurring creatures. So starting off, we have Gutter Bones, which is a 1 mana, 2, 1. Enters the battlefield tapped, and when we trigger Spectacle, so when we deal damage to an opponent, we can pay 2 mana and return it from the graveyard to our hand. So we can keep letting it die, coming back, letting it die, coming back. Uh, we also have Doom Descenders. Uh, so this is a 2 mana 1-1, one, 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 and when it dies we get a 2-2 two, two zombie. If you like this card style, remember to use the free promo code STARTER STYLES, all capitals. Uh, I'll link it in the comments below. Uh, you can get this and a couple other, uh, f like the full art animated styles for free. Uh, so we're playing 2 Priests of the Forgotten Gods. So this is a 2 mana 1-2, one, two, and you can tap it to sack 2 other creatures. And then any uh, number of target players, so your opponent loses two life and sacks a creature, and we get to add two black mana and draw a card. Um, so this card, when we can get it off, is very powerful in our deck because we can keep getting the creatures back. Um, so basically you can sack, say, two gutter bones, and then it triggers spectacle, so then we get two black mana to return one of the gutter bones to our hand all in one shot. Part of the reason we're not playing more of these is they tend to die quite easily, pretty much all removal. Um, so it's more of just a value engine with a two of. Then we're also playing three re reassembling skeletons. So it's a two mana one one, and we can pay two mana to bring it back from the graveyard to the battlefield. So we can just keep bringing it back. Uh, three fireblade artists, so this is a haste uh, two two, and at the beginning of our upkeep we can sack one of our creatures to deal two damage to any opponent. So again, at the beginning of our upkeep, we could sacrifice a Gutter Bones, deal two damage, and then pay the two mana to get it back to our hand. Uh, we're also playing Death Bloom Th Thalid. Uh, so this one is, I think the promo code is Shiny Fungus. Let me just double check really quick. It is Foil Fungus, all one word. And then you can get the free uh, card style with Death Bloom Thalid. Uh, so this is basically similar to Doom Descender, it just gives us a 1-1 one, one Sapperling instead. Uh, so bigger body up front, smaller body on the back side. Uh, with all our creatures dying, we have Midnight Reaper to help us draw some cards. We're also playing two Squee the Immortals, so we can cast this from our graveyard, uh, or from Exile. So even if they've Raskus Content it, we can still cast it again. Uh, so this is just reoccurring value. Um, if you haven't seen it, we have a combo deck around Squee where you can basically infinitely kill it and bring it back, which is actually a really fun deck. Uh, and then we got our uh, Rakdos Queen, Judith the Scourge Diva. So she makes all our creatures one power stronger. And then whenever a non-token creature dies, Judith deals one damage to any target. And because we have so many things dying in this deck, it's just a really good way to deal additional points of damage. Light up the stage is just really a one mana draw two in this deck. Uh, it just keeps us on the card advantage. We have four Rekindling Phoenix, which just keeps dying, coming back, dying, coming back. Really efficient, hard to deal with threat. And then our namesake card, Open the Grave. Uh, the, the mana base is pretty uh, standard. Uh, eight duels. I don't have two of the Dragon Skulls. Don't really want to craft them right now. So just playing Guild Gates. And then two Memorial of Follies that we can bring back some creatures from our graveyard if we need to. Uh, so we'll test it out, see how it goes in unranked, and then if it's pretty good, then we'll play it in some ranked matches. Everything reset, so we're back down to gold, uh, tier 4, uh, but we'll give it a shot. So as we get started, uh, just a friendly reminder if you haven't done so already, uh, subscribing is a free and easy way to show your support for the channel. We're closing in on 100 subs. Once we hit that mark, we will be doing another sub giveaway. For 50 subs, we gave away two promo light up the stage, the FNM promos. Uh, so we'll be looking to do something similar once we hit 100 subs, and all our past subs will also be entered. Uh, so here, this is a pretty good hand. Gutter Bones on one, Skeleton on two, and even potentially light up the stage, so we'll keep. So our deck does get pretty wrecked by a Chain Whirler, but we can just bring back the stuff. So, see, is it here? 
think we'll just get creatures out right now, and then next turn, depending on what they play, we can light up the stage. This is most likely a Phoenix build. Gateway Plaza. Might be for budget considerations. So here, I actually like bringing out the Fire Blade. We'll attack for everything and then light up the stage. Gets us in for the most damage. And now we'll Spectacle here, and this will set up our next turn, hopefully for a Judith or something. Ah, still line drop into Death Bloom is good. This could be Jeskai control. Gift of Paradise. Honestly don't know what this deck is. So we'll play the land here. And then just play out the Death Bloom. Pass the turn. This could be a super friends list. So Cleansing Nova. Not the worst. So here we'll attack in. We'll pay that, put this into play, and then we'll just get back the real reassembling skeleton. We'll do this on our end step in case they have another board clear. And if our opponent's just wasting time. So starter styles I believe also gives you the gift of paradise promo art. Grow from the ashes. This could be some sort of omniscience ramp deck. So we'll bring that back. Four power on the board. So here we need to decide, so we have lethal, I'm going to opt to not play it so that way if they do wipe our board we can reassembling skeleton back. We have lethal anyways and if they're going to use a targeted removal so be it. This is where some of the redundancy of the deck comes. We can just keep bringing back our threats. They're not the most powerful, but if our opponent's just spending time. And you can see, like, if we had a Judith out that turn, we would have done four damage to the opponent. So, Chromatic Lantern. This might be a Lich's Mastery deck as well. Okay, so they Nova here. Just bring back the skeleton. So let's attack first, see what we get. Okay, so Midnight Reaper is pretty good. So then we'll... And then just bring back gutter bones, I think. So again, we're threatening lethal. They need to have another board wipe here. And even if they wipe at this point, we're drawing three cards. Still have squee to cast. So the reason we did gutter bones over squee is squee is always available to cast. Where gutter bones, we have to inflict damage in order to get it. So it's just guaranteed that we always have squee to cast. We might not be able to cast gutter bones. And because we don't need it defensively, Okay, so they have another board wipe. We will draw three. Okay, so Judith is another nice card. <clears throat> so we'll cast the Scourge Diva. Cast the Skeleton. Just bring back the skeleton. In this case, we're okay doing it because if they have a board wipe, we want it to trigger the damage. So if they clear the board, they take three damage. 
They're at 8 mana, 9 mana with the Chromatic Lantern. They've used now 3 board wipes. So another Star of Extinction. So Midnight Reaper is a pretty good draw. So we'll just bring out the Midnight Reaper. And then we can get the two skeletons on end step that gets us around sorcery based board wipes. So here we thread in both lethal with the reaper that they need to act, uh, either wipe the board or have some sort of effect. Okay, so they play to fairy. This isn't a fight you can win. Keep up the pace. Opponents digging. They have three mana open. Opponent gives us the good game. And the noblest of deaths, the shock land to kill. So it's pretty good showing for the deck. We didn't have open up the grave, but you saw how we just kept looping value together. Take it for a couple more, see how it goes. This deck, especially against like slower style effects, will end up doing a pretty good job. They really need like settle the wreckage to stop a lot of things. So we'll keep this hand. We have gutter bones into probably gutter bones again. If you're playing against mono red, then consider Doom Descender. And then with Judith, I like this curve. What do you guys think of these card styles? They're okay. Opponents thinking. Come on. All right. So we'll just play out the gutter bones here. Really want to hit a third land. That would be best. Okay, so they have the Firebrand here. They'll attack in. So we'll play out the second one. Just attack in. I'm not going to block. If they want to sack the Firebrand to deal with the Gutter Bones, they can. But ideally, if we hit our land next turn, we can Judith. Okay, so they play get to here. Perfect. So let's see if they have a shock in response. This forces their hand. They don't. So we'll attack with both. Okay, they shock Judith. Let's get rid of the Firebrand now. Still gets in some pretty good amount of damage. They light up the stage, land, and then they do have the Lightning Strike they can use against us. Okay, so we're getting closer. Let's attack in. See if they lightning strike one of our gutter bones. All right, they do. So here, we'll play out the squee here. It's worse against a chain whirler, but it can trade off. Take the action here. Just trade off. So 
So here we can just punch in for more damage. Play out the Doom Descender. And then the best now is if we hit another land and start getting open the graves going. And then even with the Flame Blade, we can start throwing our creatures at our opponent's face. They may opt to risk factor again, to which we'll take the damage. We'll decline. Okay, so light up the stage should help us get to our next mana drop. So let's light up the stage again. Really aren't hitting our lands here. This is more of a liability against mono red than need be. With just keep casting these, we should be fine. Take the action again. They need a land and two burn spells, which they don't have. So that takes us to five, which we're still fine with. So we'll decline here, but they're dead on our turn. And that's lethal anyways. So taking down mono red with the deck two is quite impressive. Chain Whirler is really rough against our deck. Get our dailies out of the way. Haven't hit a phoenix yet. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten out, out open the graves. There's a way to like tune this deck further, just getting a little bit lower to the ground and playing more aristocrats themed. Um, open the graves is good, like long term grind value. Uh, his hand's a little slower, but we'll try it out. So this looks like Mono Red Phoenix. So here I want to go Squee. Next turn. And then probably Phoenix the following. And then they'll come in, no blocks. Uh, here. So we need to decide. Uh, play the, this. We'll choose to block. We need to get the electrostatic field off the table. This matchup's going to be really tough. Um, I think we take it here, actually. So that's worse for us. They take our removal. We don't draw land for the Phoenix. So here we're short of black mana. Let's just go Judith. So if they attack in, we'll block. If they, they more likely shock Judith. Another get to. Uh, so here, we'd have two death triggers. I think we need to go the long game. So 
We're not hitting our. Okay, finally hit our land. We can go Phoenix next turn. Probably dead regardless. Yeah. They hit. First factor again with the flashback. We have to give him the cards. That's three damage. Yeah, they got us. This is another deck we haven't played in a while. It's a little bit more glass cannon, but when it gets going, like you can see, it's really fast if your opponent doesn't have removal. So that's a tough matchup. If you don't get the field off early, then you're taking some. Like, there you're basically getting Lightning Bolt. Shock does that. If they get Gutter Snipe out, it's even more. Uh, we'll keep this hand. So a skeleton on two. Uh, they use removal. Do we care? Yeah, let's just bring this up. This is a spur. Then they probably take it out of our hand or the phoenix. Okay, so we have Judith here. Still think we get the Thalid out though. And then followed up with the Phoenix. Deathblade's also good. So here we could reassembling skeleton. See if they counter this. Play out the fire blade. Okay, so they absorb here, that's fine. Get in for three. See if the opponent Kaya's Wrath's here. They don't. Do they discard a card here? No, they sack a creature. So same idea here, we'll attack in with both. See if they respond with anything. Okay, so they cast down here. Uh, that's fine. So we'll take the damage and we'll play out the Rekindling Phoenix. So if they do play the Wrath here, we can sack it, float the mana, let the Wrath resolve, and then bring back Reassembling Skeleton. They might be looking for... Okay, so here... Let's target our opponent. Then bring back the skeleton. Phoenix comes back. And that will play out Judith. And that's the cool interaction there. You get a, quite a bit of value that way. Play light up the stage, refill our hand. Pass turn. Open the graves would be really good here. 
If not, we are threatening lethal. They need a board wipe. Okay, so they have Vraska's Contempt, which is a little rough on that creature. So here, let's see what we hit first. Off light at the stage. Another Phoenix. Probably the best play. And opponent concedes. So we took down Esper. Only lost to Mono Red uh, Phoenix. Alright, we'll play one more and see how it goes. But actually, this deck's been doing what better than I thought it would. Just the resiliency of the threats. Alrighty, let's get started on the next one. Uh, so this hand's a little awkward. We can't play a Gutter Bones on one. We can't double Gutter Bones on two. Opponent goes first. So we do have a draw. Let's try it out. Perfect. So this allows us to Gutter Bones into double Gutter Bones. And then follow it up with a Midnight Reaper in turn for their board wipe step. Okay, so this can be a high alert deck. So they make some unblockable and then you play high alert. Johnny's welcome. Help him gain some life back. So we'll play out the Midnight Reaper here. Swing in with all of them. They can block one. But we get the card draw at least. Priest is a good draw there. See what the opponent does. So let's attack with Midnight Reaper first. Alright, so let's light up the stage first, see what we get. Just more lands. Just play out the priest. Our hand was a little awkward. We couldn't double spell really that turn. We needed to get to five mana. Sky March or Aspirant gains him a life, but we'll get him to sack something. This could just be Azorius and blockable weenies. Really want to hit like a Judith or something. So here, let's attack with all, see how they block. Um, here, I want to see if they blocked with the Midnight Reaper too. So we draw some cards. Probably get rid of the Sky Marcher. Use the mana there. So here, let's play out probably the Squee. Or not the Squee, the Death Bloom. Gives us the most power. In the past turn, we have two gutter bones next turn if need be. And opponent concedes. 
So just a lot of reoccurring value with the deck. We were able to grind pretty well. Four and one with it. That game was quick. Let's play. Try to get our fifth for the, the pack here. Hopefully get an open the graves going. But between light up the stage, drawing us cards, and then just the reoccurring value. So Gilgate on one. Don't have a play till three, but they're powerful plays. On the play also helps. Just get the guild gate out of the way. Uh, so here, let's just play this out. Gutter Bones was a pretty good draw. Gives us something to do this turn. Depending on how aggressive we need to be. Okay, so they have Doom Descender. Here, I'll just bring out the Thalid. The reason we didn't attack here or even play out Judith is because they trade off here. We want him to commit another creature to the board, so then we get the value off Judith. So here... I'm actually just going to go Phoenix, I think. It allows us to pressure in the sky. And then next turn, Judith. So next turn we hit 5 in the air, plus whatever our ground creatures are. Opponent looks to be on a similar style deck, but just in Golgari. Okay, so they're already wasting their creatures in that case. And then next turn we can Judith and light up the stage for value. So we'll attack with everything. So they block there, block there. We have two death triggers. So we can get rid of the zombie. And then we all get our other tokens. Now we'll light up the stage. Okay, so we can't double spell next turn either. So that can make their creatures large. Uh, here... I think we just do this. If they want to trade it off, they trade it off. It's less creatures for them afterwards. Three Midnight Reaper, Thalid here. Because we have a Midnight Reaper in hand, Death Bloom serves us a little bit better. Gives us two bodies and a Judas trigger. The Rekindling Phoenix is pressuring them in the sky. Okay, so Rites of Bezlamog. Does the demon have flying? It does. Should still be okay by just flying over top. Land next turn, we can squee and Doom Descenders. Pretty aggressive from their part, but we'll take it. Or just another Phoenix. And see if this gets a concession out of the opponent. So they have Torgar. Okay, so even if they sack their creatures with Togar, they're gonna make their life total 10, but we can still just fly over them for 10, and we win. Power of Rekindling Phoenix there. So 5 and 1 with the deck, losing to Mono Red Phoenix, which is probably a rough matchup. Let's claim our prize. Electro Dominance. Probably have opened close to 100 packs of Ravnica and still don't have the, uh, the 4 mana spectacle demon at Mythic, which is just funny. But uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe. Thanks and have a good one.